At this point, we insert the Windows XP disk into the DVD-ROM drive and press a key to continue. During the installation procedure, Windows will attempt to detect certain devices. In this example, if you have installed a third-party SCSI or RAID driver, you would press F6. Otherwise, Windows will continue. Here we have speeded up the installation process. You will now be given three options. To set up Windows Now, to repair an existing copy of Windows using the Recovery Console, and quit the installation. Since we are installing a fresh copy of Windows XP, we simply press the Enter key. Next is the End User A License Agreement. You can use the up and down page keys to view this. Press F8 to accept and continue. Here we have the opportunity to create a separate partition. We shall be looking at partitions in greater details later. Basically a partition is the amount of space you wish to use on the hard drive. And this can be anything from 1 to 100% of the total size of the hard drive. There are some limitations to the minimum size, but a partition defines the amount we use. And we can have more than one. For now, we shall use the whole partition, so just press the Enter key. The next option is very important, since it will determine the type of filing system that will be used. We have a choice of FAT or NTFS, and we shall be looking at the differences later on. For now, given the choice, we should always choose NTFS over FAT, as it supports security, unlike a FAT filing system. Use the up directional key to select the first option, then enter.
the computer will now restart and you will be prompted to press a key to boot from CD. This message appears when Windows XP detects a partition that we created in the first part of the installation. You should now ignore this message and after a brief moment Windows will continue. Here we can choose the regional and language options. However, we shall skip this and see how we can change this when Windows is fully installed. Now we shall be prompted for name and if applicable the name of the organisation. Next is the product code. In this example it has been blanked out but the product code will have to be entered to continue the installation. You are now prompted to enter a password. In our example we shall leave this blank. Here we can check the date and time. Also we can change the time zone. For the network settings leave typical selected. For the moment we can leave the domain name as we can, if needed, join the domain when Windows is fully loaded.
windows will now choose the best setting for the display.